Hello friends, this is Otz, and today I asked a bunch of my friends, who are all DVD veterans, to tell me how long they think it will take an average player to reach different thresholds of skill. I then added my own expectations, I did an average, and these are the numbers that I got. As you can see, it gets pretty crazy. We almost immediately jump into four digits, and this is pretty wild. I also asked a friend of mine who only has a couple hundred hours in the game, and they told me much, much lower numbers, which, to be fair, is completely fine. Uh, this would be accurate for most other games. Other games, either they are very simple and they're easy to master quickly, or they have overlapping skills, which means that if you're very good at one FPS and you play another FPS, if you switch from, say, Overwatch to Valorant, there's going to be some skill that carries over. This is definitely not the case for Dead by Daylight. It's a game that you pretty much learn from scratch. You also need to learn two games simultaneously, pretty much, because if you have a lot of hours on Survivor, that doesn't necessarily make you very good at playing Nurse. And the game constantly changes, which means that you keep playing it and keep learning. And if you take a break, you'll have some catching up to do. Not to mention that there's a enormous set of perks, add-ons, and, and things to catch up to that just takes time to learn to fully understand on both sides. So, um, what what do we define as a beginner, intermediate, top MMR, advanced? Let's break it down. So beginners are players that have already learned the basic elements of the game. They know what a generator is and how many you need to repair. Uh, they know where the gates are, roughly, and how when, when you get to them. They know all of the elements of the game, and they have a roughly... Uh, cohesive idea of how it all works together and what they should be doing at any given time. Now, obviously, any player can um, can make mistakes, and this happens to, to all players, but they, they know what they're doing for the most part, and none of the basic elements of the game catch them off guard. So, that would be a beginner. And as you'll see, the, the range of this goes up and down a lot. Then we have the intermediates. These are the people that understand how to make everything work. If they have a killer, they know how to get value out of their power as much as possible. If they play in Survivor, they understand how to play around the map pretty damn well. They have map knowledge. They understand the viability of the RNG. They mostly remember all the maps and the basic uh, structure and, and, and the way they look. So they are oriented at any given time. They don't get lost too much. And obviously, they also have accumulated a bit of knowledge of add-ons, perks, items. Nothing catches them too off guard anymore because they have out of the a few hours. Next up, we have the top MMR. Now, in some other ultra-competitive games, this is something that only a small percentage of players reach. So if you play League of Legends, like getting to Diamond or Challengers, that's like 1% or 0.1% of, of all the population. But in Dead by Daylight, it's not like that. The top MMR, the highest possible matchmaking, it's a hidden number that you don't really see. It's not your rank. And, and this is extremely easy to reach. We'll get to that in a minute. And then we have the Advanced. These are what I would call the players that really reach their potential. I think most people that play the game for long enough more or less like reach this point where they are very good in chase, they use the resources really well, they basically know all the perks, all the items, all the add-ons, they basically know almost everything or at least have a decent idea of it. And behind that, there's only the professional um, tier. And that's players who not only do all of this, they are extremely consistent, they are extremely good, they push the barriers of what's possible, and oftentimes they play in non-public custom matches against other good players and keep up with those players in a competitive slash tournament setting. And obviously this is the hardest. Now, uh, after doing the average of all of our answers, uh, of me and my friends, we stated that you can be a beginner at 250 hours. That is pretty wild. And the crazy part about this is that it can go up and down a lot. People that play the game very casually with other casual players and don't really make much of an effort to learn it through guides and stuff, they can be beginners for five or 600 hours. I have seen many players, and I'm sure you have too, that have a few hundred hours and still don't know very basic things about the game. So if you're very casual and you enjoy the game at your own pace, you can be a beginner for up to a thousand hours easily, which is very, very well compared to other games. Um, conversely, though, you can also um, learn much quicker. Now, some time ago, I did coaching on two new DVD players. One of them was a chess player named Anna, Anna Rudolph, and she was very eager to learn and she learned very quickly, but she was not very into video games before, so she had to learn all of the mechanical stuff. It took her a bit longer. But then our other player was Squilla, who is a very, very serious speedrunner and video gamer, 
And a person like this that already has experience in games and he's very eager to learn, they will learn much faster than this. They can they can understand all the basic things about the game in maybe 50 hours, maybe even less if they are very serious. For both sides, it will take a little bit longer. If you really want to understand it from both sides, it will take a little bit longer. But in about 50 to 100 hours, I think someone that is very eager could learn all of the basic elements of the game. Um at that pace. Now, if you have a friend that coaches you, that's amazing. If not, what can you do to get through the beginner stage a little bit sooner? The first and most simple that many people dismiss, read the in-game manual. There is an in-game manual with several pages that details all of the status effects, all of the basic things, and this is something you could read in your, you know, while you're waiting for your friends to, to join in and, and do other things. You should read these manuals that are inside the game. Uh, playing with friends, as I said, is also an amazing thing. They will bridge the gap of your knowledge. They will answer your questions in real time. Oh, why did this happen? Oh, it's this perk. Oh, wait, I don't see the killer. Well, it's this add-on. Although playing with friends, not only is it fun and it squeezes the most value out of this game, um, it also helps you learn much, much quicker. I would also urge you to learn uh, the perks and, and, and add-ons that you play against. Every time you play against a lobby, don't just leave. Hover your screen uh, for a second and check out the perks that your opponent used, especially if they are perks that you've never seen before, that you're not, you, you're not sure what they did or, you, or you, they did something and you didn't quite understand it. Make sure that every match is a small chance to learn one more new thing about the game and slowly you will build a very big repertoire of knowledge and you'll get past the beginner stage much, much faster. Now, if you're going to try different killers, I highly recommend you watch guides for them. I have a guide that covers almost every killer in a very basic fashion, and I'll link it to the description. Uh, to help you understand what the maps look like, I also heavily recommend that you check out guides. Perhaps the most uh, simple and comprehensive that you can watch in video form is my map tier list, which I'll also link in the description. In fact, you're going to find a lot of stuff in the description. And it would also really help you to... to improve much quicker if you know how to identify the tiles. Tiles are like little structures that are the building blocks of Dead by Day. Like they're like recurring things that always have the same shape. There's the TLs, there's the jungle gyms, there's the shack. If you know how to identify them, yes, you will still be a little bit lost in the whole map, but in each little bit of the map, you will know how to deal with it and you will deal with your chases much, much better. So that's how I would recommend that you go past the beginner phase. Next up is the intermediate phase. And this one, uh, some people thought it was much higher. Some people thought it was much lower. This is the place where survivors actually begin to showcase their potential. If they have a good map, they use it well. If, they play, if you're playing a strong killer, it shows. If, you, um, if you're running a strong perk, you know how to use it. This is the moment where skill begins to matter a little bit less because you're already pushing a little bit on the limit and you start to really adapt to your surroundings. This is also a very, very scary moment. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second because now you start to play against other players that are much more experienced than you. We'll talk about that a bit more when we get to the top of MR, but this is, this is probably the hardest moment for most DVD players and I'm sure some of you uh, in the comments will 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 have noticed this that there's a moment where you stop playing just against other beginners and you start to go against people that have been playing for six years straight and it can get really really hard there's no rushing you getting here that's for sure and if you play only one side you can get here very very quickly if you play only survivor and get a little bit of help uh, you can get here much quicker than a thousand hours if you only play uh, basic killers. It will take you a bit, but you'll get faster. If you specialize in only one killer, especially if it's a killer that's very unique, let's say you only play nurse, you could be at this level in only a few hundred hours, but that will obviously hurt you when you play the other killers, and it, it's not going to make you a very well-rounded player, but you could take some shortcuts to get here. Now, how do you get here in a more holistic, round, well-rounded manner? Uh, at this point, you need to know the maps really well. Every time you see the map name, you need to have a mental picture of what it looks like. If that is difficult, please look out for map picture uh, diagrams or watch my map tier list that I linked earlier, that's in the description, which has pictures of what each map looks like so that you know where you are and you can start to call out things and understand how spawns and everything else works. Now, at, at this point, you also not only need to know the tiles, you need to identify them very quickly. If you run towards a structure, you need to, at a glance, be able to tell if that's a jungle gym, if it's not, and, and what it is and how to run it. 
So get some practice on that. At this point, almost every perk in the game should at least ring a bell. You should know all of them. Uh, some of the rare ones, obviously, you're not going to see very often, but all the important perks, you should know them perfectly. And every time you play against a killer, you should know which add-ons to look out for if there's any dangerous ones. If you do play killer yourself, you need to know which add-ons you should be running. Um, yeah. If there are a few killers that you haven't played against yet, which would be totally normal, in a thousand hours, you might never see some of the rare killers. It would be a really good idea for you to play against a friend. Ask a friend, hey, do you have a hack? I've only played against two hacks in a thousand hours. Let me practice against her. What are some tricks that I can do? Practicing with friends is amazing. And if you're playing a killer and you find yourself struggling in certain maps, you could also ask a friend for practice. Hey, I'm playing Blight and I'm struggling in indoor maps. Can I, can I chase you? Can we do some practice? It would really help to cover your own weaknesses and reach this stage a little bit sooner. At this moment, you also need to have a developing game sense that is really, really good. As a survivor, you should be looking at the hot indicator and immediately know what's going on. Someone's healing. Okay, I need to go for this rescue. No one's healing. Okay, we're trying to do the last gen. You need to really understand what is happening and uh, from the killer side, you also need to have an in inner clock. When you chase a survivor at the start for too long, you need to know how many gens are about to get done, where they might get done, where you need to chase them first. Start to understand where survivors typically spawn and which uh, patrol routes you should take. In this stage, it's a really, really good thing to rewatch your own game. So if you're a streamer or if you record your own games and you have a game where you do kind of bad, I highly recommend at this level that you watch that game and you watch it as an, as an observer. See what was happening in the HUD. Did you miss something? Maybe there's some indicator that told you that you should have been doing this or not been here. As a killer, did you miss some scratch marks? Did you miss something that you could have tracked to find someone sooner? Did you make a mistake? If you play against streamers, you can watch from their point of view and understand how they perceive you and what are some of the things that you do that work and that don't. Next up is the top MMR, which for some people sounds really scary, but let me tell you right now, this is very, very silly. Um, this is one of the few uh, thresholds where I think I disagree with most of the other people that I ask. I think you can reach top MMR much sooner than this. I think the average player might hit top MMR in about a thousand hours, sure. Uh, on both sides, I suppose, right? Split in two. But you can hit this so much sooner. If you play with friends, your, your MMR is average, so you will hit it almost immediately. If you um, are performing a little bit too good, you will hit it very, very quickly. And even if you don't hit top MMR, depending on matchmaking, sometimes you might be close enough to top MMR that you will be within range. So even if you're not quite up there, sometimes if there's no one else in the lobby uh, and the queue times are slow, you will be paired with people that are much more experienced than you. That means that for a player that is about 900 or 1,000 hours, they can potentially play against the best players in the game. Now, in my own lobbies, as someone that has a lot of hours in the game, I almost never rarely see people under a thousand hours. And that's, you know, that's because of MMR. But sometimes I do, and it's typically when they play with friends or when they're a very... Um, one of these players that learns really, really quickly. Um, the MMR in DBD is very easy to reach the max, and it's very frustrating when you do and you play against everyone. Do not be in a rush to do this. All you need to do to reach top MMR is just win more often than you lose, and you're gonna reach it almost in a matter of, of weeks, if not days. So it's not something you should be hugely concerned about, but keep in mind, it's gonna happen around this hour mark for most people. Uh, for killer, it will happen arguably even faster, and your killers, to some degree, they share MMR, but then they each individually have one, so it might work out a bit differently, but you're gonna have some... When you start to get to a thousand hours, you're gonna start to have some really tough games, because you're in that you're in that in-between, where you're occasionally playing against the best players in the game, but you're still, on average, many, many thousands of hours below them, so that's really, really rough. Next up is the advanced... Uh, threshold. This is where I start to worry about my survivors. This 2,500, 2,600 hours, that's when survivors begin to get really, really good. At least 2,000 hours. I if, I, if I go into a lobby and someone told me the survivors that you play against have this many hours, then I'd start to get worried that, yeah, I'm probably gonna, you know, I might have a tougher game. I might start to lose uh, if I don't play very good. If they have less than this, Many times, you are a massive advantage if you have a lot of hours yourself. 
So at this threshold of ours, the average survivor starts to reach their maximum potential. They get as good as they'll ever get. And these people are very solid in chase. They, if they play a killer that's strong, you're going to feel it 100%. If they get a map that's good as a survivor, they're going to use it extremely, extremely well. And obviously, at this point, their knowledge of the game is almost perfect. Their communication and understanding and, and game sense is almost perfect. And it gets really... It gets difficult to keep up with. What are some of the things that you could do to reach this level faster without necessarily having 2,000 hours plus in the game? At this point, 100%, I recommend that you 1v1 with friends. Get a friend who's learning or who's better than you or who's worse than you and you can help them and play with them. And if you play against streamers, against, again, watch them. This is going to give you live feedback of what you're doing wrong. If you have any mistake, any place that you get stuck in, any any loop where you don't wait at the perfect place, you will benefit a lot from someone telling you. This is also a time when you should be perfectly familiar with check spots and other guides on how to run tiles. I'm going to link... Let me write that down. I'm going to link... Um, a video below by a fantastic player that explains all the places where you need to wait and check and chase to make the chase as tight as possible as a killer and, and as a survivor. So your, your chases at this point should be really, really solid. If you play killer, you should have a fantastic uh, grasp on each killer's... If, you're, if, if you specialize in one killer, let's say you play nurse, you should have a fantastic grasp on their cooldowns, on how far they can make it, on which maps... Uh, are best for them and so on. And if you play a bit of everything, you're more of a generic killer. You're probably not going to be the best at any one of them, but you will have a very decent uh, knowledge of general killer, um, M1, M1 killer, basic killer gameplay. So that's great. At this point, if you're a survivor, you should have amazing callouts. You probably will start to divide the map in chunk and understand each part of the map really, really well. And, and you're going to give information real time very, very accurately. And if you're the killer, you're also going to have an amazing game sense. You, at any given time, even if you don't see survivors, you will understand that, okay, this guy is healthy, so he's going to be the one coming for the rescue. This guy is injured and dead on hook. Okay, he's probably going to be hiding. Where would he be hiding? Well, I saw a bird fly up there, so that could be him. And I see blood and no one else is injured, so this is probably him. You're going to try to... You're going to put all of the cues that the game throws at you together to make sense of what the other side is doing. And because the other side is starting to get better and more consistent you're going to very accurately guess what they're going to do. Okay, the killer is... Uh, he's only got a 3-gen, and this person's on hook. He's going, to, he's going to try to tunnel that person and then defend the 3-gen. Okay, the survivors are doing... You're going to develop this uh, game sense that we call... Of understanding what is the predictable thing that the other side will end up doing. Uh, you will also get a good internal clock for both sides. You will know that committing to this chase is going to be fine, because I'm pretty sure I can end it and still have time before they open the gates, or I'm committing to this gen is a bad idea because I know 100% that the killer is going to be here before I can finish it. So you're going to develop a really good internal clock that lets you know when you should continue or stop doing certain things. Uh, I think most players are happy to be here. Some players will reach this level at four or 5,000 hours when they're very casual. Some players will reach this much quicker if they are very, very keen on getting better. And for most players, you know, uh, anything after this, you're not really getting that much better. But there is another step that you can choose to go on to if that tickles your fancy. And that is the professional level. What do we mean by professional? These are people that play in tournaments, that play against other players who are never randoms, who are never solo players, who are never clueless uh, beginners, who are never people doing archives. These are, you're going to be playing against people who are very serious about the game, often have on average six or 7,000 hours and who have been playing for a long time and want to do their absolute best to beat you. So this would be playing tournaments, playing scrimmages, playing competitive, maybe playing public matches against players that are insane. Like, how do you reach this level? Most people seem to agree that you need close to 4,000 hours to get here. And that must be extremely discouraging if you wanted to do that with only a few hundred hours. How do you even get 4,000 hours in a game? Honestly, just reading it out loud now, it, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, but it's true. I've seen players, and we did a showcase recently. I've seen players that have 2,500 hours, and they get absolutely, you know, um, frozen, demolished by other players. You know, I've seen survivors that have a lot of hours. I've seen killers that have a lot of hours. 
and all of that knowledge means nothing when the other side has twice that many hours and they know how to play in a very serious manner. So the first thing I would advise is to leave your ego at the door. If you do very well in public matches or you think you're very good, you're probably going to be humbled when you play against a really, really good team or a really, really good comp killer. They're going to destroy you and that's okay. You will also need to stop letting, uh, stop using certain uh, comfort, comfort perks and, and crutches and get used to some restrictions. Many people that play in tournaments, they cannot use all the add-ons on their killers. They cannot use all the perks that there's typically bans. Survivors cannot use all the items. So you're going to have to really rely on teamwork, on basic perks, and, and sometimes play around certain rules. Um, if you want to get to that level and practice um, in, in, in competitive, I recommend that you join some kind of Discord community where people hang out and people look for teams and people look for scrimmages. I'm going to link one in the description from the Champions of the Fog folks. They're, they're a really nice community and they have channels where you can look for teams. And you'll be doing things such as learning the clock callout system. This is a system where people divide the map in a 12 pie chart, like a clock, and they use this to call out. And this is something that you might want to learn to make communication with your team a little bit nicer. I'm also going to link a video in the description by Hens that explains this uh, perfectly. Um, and yeah, at this point, that's as good as it gets. But guess what? You can have 5,000 hours and still have hard matches. Uh, so yeah. Overall, uh, let's see. What is the, what is the final thing? Uh, overall, understand that this game has a lot of depth you don't need to it's going to be very hard for you to beat people that specialize it's going to be very hard for you to be a better survivor than a survivor main it's going to be very difficult for you to be as good an artist as an artist main if you play a bit of everything but playing a little bit of everything is what gives this game a bit of its richness and and, and joy so i still recommend that you play a little bit of everything uh playing survivor still makes you a better killer it's the same way that you go to the gym and train legs, even though maybe you just want your arms to be bigger. It still makes you a more... It gives your physique a more consistent look. Well, playing both sides and doing a little bit of everything definitely makes you a more rounded player. And it's a lot more fun in the long run. So, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if you're interested in any of the resources that I talked about, check them. They will be all listed in the description. Uh, thanks so much and please don't lose your mind playing Dead by Daylight. Bye-bye.